in in a sort of it's like an old British Empire colonial mindset towards the end of the colonial empire. Uh, you know, like we ha- we were talking to an Indian doctor that was uh, from Canada on the COVID issues on Rumble, Biva and I, yesterday. But, you know, he went through all of the screw-ups that the British made in India. He's like, it wasn't just, you know, disliking their rule and their colonial. Is that they were incompetent, particularly in the last century of their rule. They were doing things that it, where people were like, why? You're, you're shutting down this industry for no apparent profitable purpose uh, for you. And it, you read about dying empires, and they tend to have idiots. It's kind of like, you know, it's what Thomas Paine's argument was against the right of kings and queens to rule. He's like, have you studied, you know, how these people are born? Do you really think these people are God's choice to rule us? Uh, And it was one of the, you know, the brilliant rhetorical effects in the taverns and bars of the colonial era that helped precipitate the American Revolution. The same is true. You just meet these people. It's like when, I mean, so many of them are from Yale. It's just an Ivy League. When I was at Yale, I was like, these people shouldn't rule anybody, anytime, anywhere near. These people are terrifying. Give me any plumber. Give me any guy off the street. goes back to William F. Buckley. I would rather have anybody out of the phone book than, uh, uh, than anybody from Harvard rule me. Uh, and it's true, uh, and it, but it's more true now than it was then. These people are not just they, – they have Kissinger's moral compass combined with Carter's level of, of incompetence. And that's not a good marriage. No, that's actually that's actually Alexander. Your thoughts uh, and, uh, yeah. and and Alexander, your thoughts and I also would would like you to segue since we're talking about incompetent rulers, segue into uh, the mandates and Trudeau and let's uh, talk about that as well. So I leave it up to you, Alexander. Uh, uh, absolutely. On what Robert said, and then let's segue into the the most at yeah. this moment, the most incompetent, well, the poster boy of incompetent. Uh, well, indeed. Well, can I just say, I mean, uh, what Robert said about declining empires and the, the level of incompetence suddenly grows. Um, it's absolutely right. Of course, I <laughs> live in Britain and I'm you know, British Empire and all of that. I know that extremely well. And what you have with the British Empire, when it's sort of established in the 18th century, you have incredibly ruthless, piratical, brilliant people, Clyde, Wolf, they're going around, they're winning battles, they're doing sometimes terrible things, but nobody can dispute their, you know, their energy and their drive and their intelligence and their absolute ruthlessness. And then what then happens sometime around the middle of the 19th century is that all those people are replaced by the products of the public schools, the people who are the younger sons of the aristocracy, who, you know, what we, you know, we, what, what do we do? We find them a nice, cushy block job in, you know, uh, Maharashtra state in India, India or pack them off to Nigeria, or what, what, what was then what we now call Nigeria. And, you know, they're put in charge and they run things there. And they've got no real understanding of these things. But, of course, it becomes, the British Empire became basically a um, job agency for the incompetent younger sons of the British aristocracy who went to these places. And, of course, it was well understood that part of the purpose that they were sent there was in order to enrich themselves. There was an awful lot of corruption about it. And it seems to me that you're getting an awful lot of what uh, we see today, uh, um, according to what Robert was saying, that, again, the people who built up U.S. power were men of dynamism, energy, intelligence, ruthlessness. But what we now have today is, well, um, Jake Sullivan (laughs) and people of that kind, people who are, uh, uh, frankly, I mean, they couldn't, as we say, uh, you know, fight their way out of a paper bag. If <laughs> I mean, with all the corruption and incompetence that we saw with you know the events in you, you, uh, in Ukraine, so I mean, it seems to me that we have this. And by the way, I remember there was a program, a sort of parodic program that we did in Britain about the last imperial governor of a particular African fictional African country and suffice to say that his name this is a program was sir complete idiot <laughs> so it's that kind of d- decline that 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 we see we saw in Britain and well I hope it doesn't come to that in the US and of course the US is a much bigger country and there's much more dynamism and energy 
and I think ultimately a lot more reserves of intelligence, dare I say. But it does need to rid itself of all of this and put these terrible people in their box, if I can just say that. But the problem is, when you that's the other thing that happened in Britain, and it explains so much about British decline, because you send all these younger sons out, they're, they're incompetent, they're, 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 but they become rich, they become powerful, they bring back their ideas back home, they start running Britain itself in very much the same kind of way that they used to run their colonies. They are, have an authoritarian drive. Britain used to be an extremely anarchically liberal place. And there's a very famous statement that was once made in the House of Lords when Gladstone wanted to impose restrictions on alcohol, alcohol consumption. And somebody in the House of Lords got up and said, I would rather see, um, yeah, um, I, I want to see Britain, free, uh, I, I would rather see Britain free than Britain sober, for example. I mean, that was very much the internal British tradition. But you got all of this authoritarianism and uh, um, incompetence brought in from the empire, and it was imported back home, and many of its methods started to take hold here. And I think you've seen the same in the United States to a terrible extent, except, as I said, I think the, ant the democratic antibodies in America are much stronger. But that is exactly what has led us to some of the things that we're seeing in the United States today. These attempts to impose all these extraordinary restrictions to govern without law, which for me is an abomination. I and I really can't express how strongly I feel about that, having you know led lived when I was young in Greece in a, 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 in a country where legal order had to a great extent broken down. And, and you see all of that being brought back home. You see in, the intelligence services getting involving themselves in the political process at home. And of course, it directly leads us to this corruption of law, this abuse of law, and these, these mandates, these restrictions, all of these things that we have seen in the United States today. The empire and the problems within the United States are intimately interconnected. And the one also explains why the political class in the United States has declined in the way that it has. If you have a true republic based on the Constitution, under the rule of law, which people exercise democracy freely, then the kind of political class that we have seen emerge in the United States is impossible. Well, yeah, and you could argue that it, you could extend that throughout the Western English-speaking empire. Uh, you know, the Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the United Kingdom. Uh, 